this video we will talk about the fetal circulation before looking into the fetal circulation we will first see how an adult circulation works in human adults there are actually two circulations going on simultaneously the pulmonary circulation or the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circulation or the systemic circuit the blood that is deoxygenated blood from whole of the body returns through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the right atrium and this flows downwards into the right ventricle on contraction the right ventricle pushes this deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary arteries into the lung capillaries where the blood gains oxygen and gives off carbon dioxide in this way the blood gets oxygenated and returns through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium and flows downwards into the left ventricle on contraction the left ventricle pushes this oxygenated blood through the aorta and the circulates to whole of the body then again the deoxygenated blood returns back to the right atrium and this cycle keeps going on there are several differences in the adult circulation and the fetal circulation we will first see some special features in the fetal circulation placenta is the source of oxygen for the fetus but in an adult the source of oxygen is the lungs in contrast to the adult lungs fetal lungs do not exchange gases and receive less than 1% of the blood volume in the fetal heart the right atrium is the chamber with the highest oxygen concentration but in an adult this is the left atrium which has the highest oxygen concentration the special structures present in the fetal circulation include the umbilical vein which is the blood vessel that takes the oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus the next is the ductus venosus which is the vascular shunt between the umbilical vein and the inferior vena cava the next is the foramen ovale which is an opening in the interatrial septum in the fetal heart this allows the blood to flow from the right atrium to the left atrium the next is the ductus arteriosus which is the vascular connection between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta lastly we have two umbilical arteries which take the deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta now we will see how the blood flows in a fetal circulation or the pattern of blood flow in a fetal circulation the placenta accepts the blood without oxygen from the fetus when the blood goes through the placenta it picks up oxygen and becomes oxygenated blood the oxygen rich blood then returns to the fetus via the umbilical vein the umbilical vein delivers some of the oxygen rich blood to the liver and most of it is shunted through the ductus venosus into the inferior vena cava the blood from the inferior vena cava flows into the right atrium of the fetal heart from the right atrium through the foramen ovale this blood flows into the left atrium and then to the left ventricle when the ventricles contract the blood from the left ventricle flows into the aorta and this highly oxygenated blood is delivered to the brain via subclavian arteries and is also delivered to the fetal myocardium the deoxygenated blood from the upper body that is the head and arms returns back to the right atrium and flows into the right ventricle on contraction the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle is pumped into the pulmonary trunk but since the lungs are collapsed and there is high vascular resistance in the lungs most of the blood from the pulmonary trunk is shunted to the distal aorta through ductus arteriosus and is supplied to the lower part of the fetus thus the lower part of the fetal body receives relatively desaturated blood the two hypogastric arteries arise from the internal iliac arteries and enter the umbilical cord forming two umbilical arteries in this way the deoxygenated blood is taken to the placenta for oxygenation when the baby is born the fetal circulation now changes into the adult circulation the changes that take place in the fetal circulation after birth include first change is the closure of the umbilical arteries which change into the lateral umbilical ligaments the functional closure is almost instantaneous but the actual closure takes place in almost 2 to 3 months the next change is the closure of the umbilical vein which changes into ligamentum teres The obliteration of the umbilical vein occurs a little later than the arteries, allowing a little extra volume of blood to be received by the baby from the placenta. The next is the closure of the foramen ovale, and there remains an oval-shaped mark on the interatrial septum called the fossa ovalis. Closure of the ductus arteriosus results in the formation of ligamentum arteriosum. The functional closure of the ductus arteriosus occurs soon after the establishment of pulmonary respiration. and the anatomical closure occurs when there is growth of the fibrous tissue in the lumen by 1 to 3 months closure of the ductus venosum it constricts in about 3 to 7 days and eventually becomes the ligamentum venosum thank you that was all about the fetal circulation